Alright guys, um, I haven't been many videos of late, but this is an interesting one, so I thought this is a perfect candidate for a video. What we've got is a bear bike, um, that's what it's sold as. Uh, let me just quickly flick, there she is. Before we get into it, uh, let's find out what it is first, um, what the spec is, etc, etc. Let's price it up, um, and then we'll take it from there. It's been dropped off by a customer, uh, bike doesn't turn on. I did have time to pop the side panel off and the customer was here. Uh, while I was poking around for 10-15 minutes, I noticed a lot of goodness. Um, a few things of cringe. Um, and what else? Uh, I managed to test the battery. Now the 72 volt battery in total has only got 16.5 volts coming out of it. Uh, so we already know there's an issue there. But we'll get around to all that in a minute. Let's see what we're working with first, what it does, what it's meant to have on it, what it's supposed to do, etc. So we got a bear bike. Um, many probably know looking at it. Uh, it's a bomber bike light frame. Um, it's had some nice CNC cutting done to it um, to brand it up, etc. etc. So if I just start flicking through this a second, let's have a look. This is the listing I could find for it. Um, so we've got uh 13 and a half um she comes in different colors different flavors this one's gorgeous uh, sort of a gun metal effect anyway down to the spec let's get straight on to it a second uh I, what i did notice about this is some of the spelling uh, we're gonna have to take it with a pinch of salt um it's been translated at some point so what we should have is a 72 volt battery uh, e-bike in front of us we haven't got the charger, it says nothing about battery capacity, nominal power 4000 watts, that's incorrect, it's a 3000 watt motor, that's its nominal power, peak power 20,000 watts, that's also incorrect, uh, motor electronic with high copper filings, I think what they mean is the motor has been pre-filled with ferrofluid to keep it cool, I don't know why it's come out like that as a translation, uh, the nuts and bolts of the thing, don't really need to look at that a minute okay so this is what they've made that's the price let's have a quick look on this particular bike in front of us um this one let's run through the parts list exactly what's fitted to this and um, their ratings what they're supposed to do so we'll start with let's go to the rear motor first rear motor um, identical match would be a QS 3000 watts model 205 version 3 uh, 72 volts high speed motor uh, it's the identical motor down to the sticker branding that you see there um, I'll pull up photos of the one that's on here that's the exact same sticker same branding same serial etc etc now the manufacturer states for this motor let's have a quick look see what they've got if they've got any info at all Dun dun dun. It's a 3000 watt motor and it peaks to 6000. So that's accurate. Um, this I would believe over the eBay rating where it says it peaks to 20,000 watts. Uh, the cables are not rated to 20,000 watts, that's why I know that's a lie. Um, and this nominal power is 4000 watts according to the eBay ad. Uh, where's she gone? Dun dun dun. Nope. It's here somewhere. Yeah, there's the eBay ad, and it clearly states in the eBay ad, 4,000 watts nominal power, when we know the motor is only rated for 3,000, and peaks at 6,000 in reality, and the eBay rating says 20,000. So this is accurate, this comes from the manufacturer. So in fact, it is a 3,000 watt motor, it peaks to 6,000 watts, it's 72 volts. Um, anything else important here for information? The manufacturer, no apart from that. Price of the motor is 264. Controller. So what have we got on this? The controller fitted to this is a Sabaton uh, model S3NC72150. Nice controller. Um, towards the top range of things. Uh, they usually come with Bluetooth and is a UF to PC canvas. Uh, anyway, you connect your computer to run through all the settings. Um, this is what's fitted to the actual bike that's in front of us and we have version let me see we have version number 
Let's see. So if we for this to take it about. Okay, cool. So we've got version number two fitted. It's a field orientated control controller. Um, also runs sinus. Well, nice wiring diagrams. So that's great from the manufacturer. Um, cost of two ten. That's all thrown onto a frame from AliExpress at the retail of two three five. Um, as you can see, the maker of the bear has basically had the side panel CNC'd with the bear logo. That's about it for that one. Let's have a little look. Let's pull up a some better picture so we can just get a better comparison. There's the frame there, and there's the original there. Um, what else is fitted to this display? It's a standard 850C display. Um, what else have we got? rear damper is a fox thx2 um i've priced all this out front forks couldn't find them they are fox 40 rc2s but i can't see them anywhere um to purchase but that's pretty much all the equipment that's on you is there anything else i'm missing out on no um note of interest this bike is reviewed on youtube um i did listen to the review and the spec that's stated in the review the spec that's stated in this review also doesn't match what's actually on the bike. Um, whether they downgraded it at a certain point. Um, the spec for the actual bike on the YouTube review states it has an ASI controller, a back 8000, um, which would be top tier, top of the line. Um, but it doesn't, so I don't know where that stands. Maybe they changed components during manufacturing, etc. So let's look at the one we've got in at the moment. That's the one we've got in at the moment. Um, I've dropped out the bottom panel for the controller. Yep. Is there. So I've removed that um, just so I can get to the wiring, just to run a quick diagnostic while the customer is here. LCD, no power. Go straight to the battery first of all, check for power there. Nothing at all. I did take the side panel off, hence why some of the screws are removed. I put it back on just so you can see what she looks like when she's together. So what we're going to do is start by taking this side panel off. We're going to zoom in. We're going to see some of this wiring, see how it's connected, how it was built, um, etc, etc. Uh, what I did notice, the wiring is nice. There's cap and tape. Um, it's very tight in there for a room, as you'd expect, to be honest. Uh, one thing I did notice, the BMS wires are running external of the battery, so is the BMS. Which is not that bad, but there's no protection for any of it. Um, you know, if someone was to kick the side panel really hard, squash the BMS wires together, you can see how that's going to go straight away. There's no stopping what's about to happen, and that's the whole bike gone. Um, apart from that, that's the only thing I've spotted so far. So, I think it's best we pop the side off, and... Um, I'll zoom in and we'll take a look see what's going on inside there. Right, so this is what we're looking at with the side panel removed. Oh, I didn't want to get down here. I can see some of this having to come up out onto the bench anyway. So, a quick layout. We've got a custom battery. Uh, divides into two sections. It is a 72 volt battery. Divides into what looks like 248 volt blocks. Uh, no, 236 volt blocks, sorry. Uh, which would be 20 in CD, 72, yeah, cool. So there's two 36 volt battery blocks chained together to make the 72. Uh, it's doubled over with XT90 connectors. It looks like 12 gauge wire through and through, so that'd take the power. We've got our speed controller here, access panel there, where extra wiring should be. Oh, we'll have a look around in a second. Um, all this was protected by a sump plate and obviously wiring there. Uh, the wiring on this particular controller is not fancy, so that's nice and easy. The main concern right now is the battery only has 16 volts. Um, when I removed the panel, obviously, this section was tucked up inside the frame. But this BMS wire was run like this, jammed tight against the lid. Um, so you can see what I mean. These BMS wires do not never need to touch each other. That would short the battery completely out. Um, yeah, and it goes from there. Um, so I think the best thing to do first of all is to get this battery out, test it as a whole, see how many voltage we got coming out of it, because it's only 16 at the moment, whether that's down to the BMS as a fault, 
or the cells themselves. I might see if I can just whip these out to test these, the balance leads. Um, I tested them once already, but I gotta confirm myself on everything on this one. So it's best if I just pause a second, drop all this out, chuck it up on the bench, and then you can have a much better view. We'll also find out what the battery's made out of, what BMS it's running, what it's rated for, whether the cells have any voltage in them at all. As we already know, anything below 2.5, uh, the cells are pretty much done. You can slow charge them back up. That's a choice some people make, it's up to them. It would save a hell of a lot of money in this case, but just as an example, inside that blue wrapping, we're gonna find basically this, just a lot more of this. And what we've got is rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows. Um, each row cannot drop below 2.5. Um, yeah. Charging them up past 2.5 gets a bit... Uh, it's a bit unsafe in all fairness. You can revive them, but they've got to be done properly. So let's just pause a second, whip this out, get it up on the table. It's going to take me a few minutes. And we'll see where we go from there. Alright. That was not fun. Anyway, battery out. So what we've got left now is a bike carcass. Controller fitted. I'm assuming it's going to run. Uh, this battery is the issue, but we need to test it first. So, good news, it's an Ant Plus BMS. So we can communicate with this via our phone. Um, we can also plug it into a computer as well, but we, we buy a phone. So we can diagnose the battery using the BMS it's installed. Bad news, the battery's only giving out 16 volts. So this BMS won't even turn on at this point. So let's just check from the main negative first. Keep an eye on the multimeter. So we'll go from our main negative coming out of the BMS to our main positive coming out of the battery. And we get a total of 13.81 volts and the BMS is drawing a few volts so already this battery's at fault so what I'm just going to do is take the balance leads out of the BMS let's get this put out disconnect the BMS completely because we're not going to be needing that a second so we can remove that All right, so that's that out of the way. Now we're left with two battery packs. Uh, they're joined together to make one giant one. So let's take the BMS out of the equation and just go straight from the first negative, first positive. Let's see what we got from there. So we'll take our First negative, first positive, yeah, and there's that 16 volts I was seeing. So the BMS was taking 3 volts, it won't power up anything less than 5. So anyway, the whole 72 volt battery in total is only holding 16 volts. So we'll use these balance leads so we can test the rows of the cells. So we hopefully wouldn't have to cut into it. Um, don't get me wrong, it would be nice to see what the battery's made of. So I think we will move a little section so we can see the cells. Yeah, we'll do that. But first, we're just going to check the rows of cells. So we'll take... I think a lot of you already know this anyway. These are balance leads. Each one of these wires runs to the first and last negative of each row in series, all the way along. So I'll just measure one row a second needs to be over 2.5 uh, 0 0.9 shuffle along to the next row 0 0.9 uh, 0 0.8 we'll check all these rows might as well 0 0.7 0 0.7 right so the batteries this is the issue 0 0.8 seems to be yeah, 0 0.3, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Depends on what cells this is made out of. This might be stable. It'll take a bit of work, though. 
So this whole pack on this side, all the cells are 0 0.8 except for one is 0 0.3, all the rows. Um, slide's not good, first of all. We can feel the 2.5 at least to charge the battery up. Now the history of this is apparently it took a bump. Um, there's no bad markings and I don't see why it's a small bump would do this to the battery. Let's just check this a second. Right, row 1 is 0 0.8, 2 is 0 0.8, 3 0 0.7, 0 0.8. It can balance itself once the BMS turns on, 0 0.7. It's just getting these cells charged. It's going to be really difficult. 0 0.7, 0 0.8. So basically, this battery has drained itself down. It's like it hadn't been charged for ages. Can't get nothing off this last row at all. Why is that? Let me just triple check. There is nothing on this last row. Nothing. That's interesting. Zero point eight on the row before. It's like the last red is not even connected to anything. Let me investigate that. But all the cells on this one are also low. Let me just chase this last red on the one pack a minute. What I'm going to do is disconnect the two packs. We'll just keep one with us a second. I uh, just wasn't getting a reading on the red line, which is quite interesting. Let me just put this somewhere. Oh, these are heavy. Right, let's trace this red line back a minute. Um, it should be connected up to here. So we might have to peel back some of this and have a look. Oh. usual gaffer tape. Oh, let me check continuity between the red and the last red here a minute, because that'll also tell me if it's connected. It's quite interesting, it's not though. Hmm, that's what I think we'll do. We'll slip down there a second, follow this red line, it's supposed to be connected to the BMS, which is the last positive, which would help the BMS turn on. Uh, and trace it down to the red here, because there's no continuity either. So bear with me a few seconds. Well, that was a bit fun. So the BMS, the way it's wired up, the red is joined to the last white. Uh, that's why there's no voltage, there's continuity between the end two, so problem solved. Uh, opened up a little bit, had a look. It's made from 21700 model cells. Just like these, instead of 8 and 650s, they are Samsung 42 model. Um, interesting thing, there's no plastic coating around them at all. Um, it's just bare metal outside shell with a few wraps of captain tape that's not covering the whole cell. So that's a bit ropey, um, if I'm honest. They should be isolated. Um, let's see if we zoom in, get a better look at that. Camera. Yeah, so as you can see, there's a lot of captain tape going on, but the cells, the reason you can see through them is because they're not isolated at all from that. So the question is now is can we charge this up? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows. Um, okay, so there's nine rows. Let's do the math. Let me zoom back out a second. Let's bring this up. We need to bring this up to voltage safely. So I'd be happy to get into 2.5. 
Uh, let me see. 2.5 times the 9. If we can get it to 22.5 volts. That would be happy days. And what's she sitting at now? I think job one is to try and fix this battery. Then we've at least got a battery we can put onto the bike and sort the wire out. The wire on the battery is nothing. Uh, uh, sorry, the wire on the bike is nothing. It's all about this battery. 7.19 volts. Okay, so I'm going to start injecting some voltage into this. See if I can get it up and make sure the temperature doesn't rise, etc. And um, hopefully I can get both packs raised and get this battery to at least 65, 70 volts. And then we've at least saved a lot of money on the battery because it's not cheap. Um, what would this be anyway? Let's have a quick look. Battery for this. Mm. Now this is a big battery in here, so okay, and that's a cheaper cobra one, not made from Samsung. Samsung one was up into the thousands. So we'll do our best to save this battery first to save the customer. And then we'll take it from there. We can get back to the wiring of the bike tomorrow once this is actually working both sides of the battery and then at the end of the day tomorrow we should have a working bike right catch you in a bit